love to hear some some things that have gone on this week. I don't care if it's successes and struggles. I just want to hear some. I don't care if it's personal or real estate. I just want to hear some 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 things. I want to know what's going on with you all. Well, Candace, I had a vacation to Cabo last week, so um, I'm just okay. getting back to the flow of everything. <laughs> so let me ask so you. Let me ask you a question about that, Marquia. So okay. first of all, wow, that's fantastic. And second of all, um, was that at all? Oh, no, let me not ask that question. Let me ask you this question. How did you handle your business when you were gone? I actually referred it out. I had two deals going on uh, with two different clients and I referred it out and told the agents to just pay me a 25% referral fee because I didn't want to stress on vacation. Why did I know you were going to say something like that? Because <laughs> I really did. I was stressing myself so out and I was like, nope. <laughs> I'm just going to say, Marquia, that's fantastic. I, uh, the week of October 25th, I got married on my birthday and uh, best present ever. I, I, now I think back and I'm like, that could have gone really seriously wrong. I could have had a real bad birthday for every year of my life, but I got lucky. I got a good husband. And, um, and so we went to St. Thomas. I took two real estate calls from people that I knew but other than that I did not turn on my computer and I did not look at my phone and I had a closing today so and you had a closing back today? From vacation to a closing <laughs> and that just means that you came back refreshed right I did yeah um one of the things Larry heard today in Dustin's class Marquia that's I, I just have to say that's fantastic thank um, you I, I, you set the example all the time. You, you constantly set an example for people. And, I, and in your career full-time, you set the example. And I love that about you. Um, and Larry heard today in class that Dustin was saying, what happens at 1230? And, you know, it, it was lunch. You need to take a break because you come back refreshed. Even athletes take breaks from training, right? Actors take breaks from, from acting. But you need to take a break every once in a while and you need to take a break daily because if you've lead gen all morning you've had probably some rejection and it's, it's important to reset your brain and you know you can do you can do anything you want if you don't like to eat lunch you can do meditation you can do guided videos um, you can do a book read a book you can do all kinds of different things but um <laughs> hi honey i was just talking about how you're my best present <laughs> Yeah, we're on Zoom. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, that was one of the things. So to take a break every once in a while is really, really great. So thank you for setting that example, Marquia. Anybody else? I learned how to send out uh, mailers. I saw you post about that, Donnie, <laughs> through, through Remind, that, that's right? That's awesome. Tell us about that a little bit. Um, so Remind, so I originally uh, ordered a whole bunch of postcards from... Um, I forget the website, right? And then I realized I was going to have to label them all, mail them out myself, possibly get some envelopes if necessary, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then I went on to Remind. Um, I forgot who recommended it. And I did the uh, search, you know, for the area I wanted, narrowed it down to, you know, the types of uh, potential properties I was looking for, you know, like equity of this much and um, serious buyers, make sure the owners own it, not renting it out and how well the neighborhood sells for all that. So it narrowed it down from like a thousand or so to 230. And then I was able to uh, create my own mailer through Remind and, uh, you know, add my picture, add my message. Okay. I was able to add a testimony on it and then, uh, basically Remind sending them all out for me. And I just got an email today saying they just been sent out to all 230 houses. So. You know you're going to be on the huddle right one morning teaching this or on a dual career teaching this. That, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only done it. So, yeah. but uh, I mean, yeah, and then price-wise, you know, it's reasonable. And I plan on doing it, you know, beginning of every month, you know, same location, maybe broaden my search a little bit. But uh, price-wise, I think it's definitely reasonable and it makes it easy. And I know it's getting out there and um, they, they see my face on a postcard, so. That's wonderful. I love that. Give me one second. I just, I just chased Ronnie out of the room. <laughs> I said, you're making a lot of noise and I have to mute myself. 
that doesn't work for now. Anybody else want to say anything? Uh, yeah, Candice, um, um, Sissy, um, she made the, she jumped on the call on a huddle the other day and just was, you know, she was telling us about, you know, stepping outside our comfort zone and, 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 you know, finding something that you're good at. And, you know, I love people, you know, and I don't mind, um, you know, talking to people on the fly. So saying I'll let to say I called like 10 Fizbos, um, the other day and, um, you know, it, it was a rush, but I see that that's something I like to do. So um, I'm, you know, saying, saying that to say I'm stepping outside my comfort zone, you know, to grow the business. That's fantastic, Larry. You know, sometimes sometimes the, the discomfort zone lasts a short while. And they're, they're, and, and so, so as you get, as you get success in it, the, the rejection won't sting as much. It'll still sting, you know, it'll still be like, oh, well, but, but you'll just be like, next, next, next. I have a saying, and it's, it's going to be not sound that gracious, but my saying is some will, some won't, who cares, move on. <laughs> it takes me out of the equation. It keeps me, it keeps me from getting so personally involved. And do they like me? I, I always remember that Sally Fields, uh, when she won the, was it an Oscar or an Emmy? And she goes, you really like me. You really, really like me. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's, it's. In our business, it's not about that, right? It's about they either, especially if they don't know you, they, they either will or they won't. So I'm so glad that you're you're doing that and that you're stretching a little bit because that's gonna this, those are they're immediate, right? They're they're I want to sell now. So um, if anybody else want to say anything that happened in the past week? So before we get started, is there anything on your mind that you want to know about? Tonight, we're going to talk about, um, I've, I've been reading a book, how to talk, well, I've been listening on audio, how to talk to anybody about any anything but by Lyle Lowndes, and it's 92 tips and tricks on how to talk to people. Um, it takes the Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people, which is the what, to actually the how, the breaking it down into how you do that. So that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight, unless there's something else. This is a mastermind, so we can talk about any burning issues that you want before I get into that. I better go back and figure out how to talk to anybody about anything because nobody's responding. <laughs> but, Just smile. Okay, I'm gonna get started. And this is how I wanna start. Hi guys, here I am. How did that feel? How did that feel to everybody? You can take yourself on mute. Just be honest, how did that feel? Inviting. Okay. Yeah. What if I change that to from, hey guys, here I am. What if I change that to, hi everybody, there you are. Do you hear the difference? Yeah. There you are. One is about me, the other is about you, right? That's the key to, if, if I could just, oh, hi, sweetie. If I could just, aw, if I could, if I could just say one thing and you would take one, get a, one takeaway from this whole class, it would be, and Melissa's, Melissa's jumping on. This is gonna be a little bit of a review for Melissa. But um, if I could just give you one takeaway from this whole class, it would be make it about the other. Every single time you get on the phone, every single time you meet somebody, every time you're at an open house, every time you door knock, don't think about what you want and who you are. Think about who they are and what story they might have to tell. Melissa, like I said, this is going to be a little bit of a review for you because this is how to talk to anybody. But you can always chime in and say how you've changed things up or done anything differently because of this. So I'm glad you all are here tonight. Um, so, so that's the difference. Does that make sense to everybody? Did you hear the difference? Did it feel better? Did it feel better to you when I said here, there you are? Felt more personal. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I mean, if I walk in the room and this is what happens, we, because when I get nervous, I go back into myself, right? So if I'm in an open house and somebody walks in and maybe they're not, you know, so, so friendly and I'm like, um, 
well, yeah, so I've been in business 21 years and da 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 and this is me, 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 instead of going, hey, thank you so much for coming in. Tell me a little bit about what you're looking for. Why are you at the open house? What about this attracted you? All those, what, why, well, why, so, so this is the thing from bold. Why questions are a little bit more judgmental. Like, why did you do that? You know, when you, when you if you have kids, it's like, why did you think that was smart? Those kinds of things. So why question isn't so much a big thing, but what, how, when, where, those are good questions to ask people. Those are open-ended questions. So, um, so you can say, what about this open house attracted you? What, a, what are you looking for? When are you thinking you'd like to be in your new home? Where would you like to move to? Where have you been? Where have you been looking? All those kinds of questions um, are really important to ask people at open houses. And those are all them focused, right? They're all focused on them. They're not, they're not, I have some homes to show you. I pulled some listings. I have the seller's property disclosure. The way you frame your words is so important. So it's, here is a seller's property disclosure for you. Here are some other homes that you might find interesting. Here is some information about this neighborhood for your review. It's all you, 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 you. I took me out of it completely and made it all about, this is what I, this is what I used to say. I have to sell my value every single day, all the time. And people don't know what you do for them unless you tell them, right? So here's something prepared for you. The I is implied, they know you did it. Um, okay, so then the second thing is eye contact. Um, one of the, one of the, my husband is still being noisy. That's his phone. Give me one second. I'm going to turn it off. Excuse me. Thank you guys for your patience. It's it's the real world, right? Um, okay. Oh yeah, no, it's okay, Candice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We share an office up here, so um, that's that's part of the reason why his phone's here. But anyway, um, so eye contact is a really important thing. It shows that you're interested, right? Um, I, I gave this example the morning that I taught this. <sighs> it was that if you've ever, I've interviewed people and sometimes, especially young people, will, will look down and they, they don't want to make eye contact and they're fidgety, they're nervous, right? I'm hardly an intimidating person, but, but sometimes people just, they haven't developed that skill yet of how important it is to make eye contact. So if, if, I, if I don't look at you, it's like you're not there. So a way to make someone feel important is to look at them, focus on them, right? Look at their eyes and, and, and be interested in what they're saying. That's, that's a big deal, um, especially at open houses. We tend to walk around in front of people and go, here's the foyer, here's the stairs, you know, all obvious. But if you focus on them and watch them and their reactions, you'll learn a lot more than being on stage. Does that make sense? It's real, and as a flight attendant, I was always on stage. It was always, you know, the, the aisles were my stage, right? So I was always on stage trying to trying to change the, so for me, especially on international flights, the more you can engage people and unless they're sleeping, right? The more you can engage people and, and create a kind of a community, the better your flight was. So, so that comes naturally, but if you just back off and let the other people be on stage, they shine, you seem more interesting because you've let them shine, if that makes sense. So um, I, know, I know sometimes in an open house, it's, it's real easy to be like so excited and you're representing the house and everything, but really remember that these people are trying to figure out if they can live in this house and just kind of be, be in that space, let them experience. Um, okay, so then this, this woman that wrote this book has some 
really funny things that she does to help you remember how to do, do things. And Melissa, you'll remember this, hands, horse sense. So there was this horse, I get to tell you a story now. There was this horse who was considered the smartest horse in the world. Nobody could stump this horse. You could ask him math questions, right? So you could ask him what's 25 times 100 or what's, what's eight times 30. And he would paw out the answer and he got it right every single time, every single time. They could not figure out how this horse could do math. It was, it was a mystery. And he would be on, he would be on stage and that this is what would happen. And he would get it right every time he'd paw out the answer. And what happened is they discovered, somebody said, I want to try something. And what they discovered is they whispered to him instead of asking him, they whispered to him. So nobody else could hear what is eight times 30. And he couldn't do it. And what they figured out is that he was reading the crowd so that what happened is when he would, he would just keep pawing. And the minute he noticed a shift of the audience and they would be like, oh, he would stop pawing. So he got it right every time because he was reading the audience. The audience would know when he got it right and they wouldn't know he would have kept going, right? But he was reading the audience. And I'm gonna say that if a horse can do it, we can do it. It just takes some skill and it takes real listening. Anybody want to comment on that or anything like that? Anybody oh, yeah, anything? absolutely. That that makes a lot of sense, you know, because a lot of times we could just be so focused on it on, you know, one thing instead of, you know, feeding off, you know, other people, you know, focusing on focusing on them. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And and that's this is this is a great time, Larry. Thank you for that. This is a great time to say that. Um, when we are focused on other people, we can read them. So have you ever been in a conversation with somebody? I mean, so for instance, I have, let me not get personal. There are people in the world who have passions that are different than mine. For instance, my, one of my passions is art. I majored in art. I'm a painter. I'm an illustrator. I could talk to you about composition and symbolism all day long, and you would be bored stiff. I mean, you would be bored to the point where you wanted to shoot yourself or me and go eat like stress eat. <laughs> so, so if we're talking too much about real estate and we're demonstrating all the knowledge we have and we start to see somebody doing fidgety motions or trying to get away from us or, you know, they, people, if you watch people, they will tell you what's going on with them, with their body language. Even on Zoom, I've seen it sometimes when I'm talking too much about something and I see people kind of go, sit back and change. So what, once you, if you pay attention and you get sensitive to that, you can shift the subject back to them, right? So you're demonstrating all this knowledge that you have about real estate because you've forgotten to make it about them because we're human, we get to do that, right? We get to be human our whole lives. So we're gonna make mistakes. We're not gonna be perfect at it. We're not gonna be completely skilled at it until we've done it for a long, long time. But so you're talking too much about real estate, about the area, about what you know, you're demonstrating all your knowledge because that's what we're gonna do because that makes us feel important. And it's also um, helps, helps us with our confidence. And all of a sudden they're like trying to edge out of the room. Well, then just change the subject and make it about them. Like, so tell me about where do you live now? You know, conversation starters. And then they'll, be, they'll start to get engaged again. And then just back off that, back off that knowledge dump, right? Just back off that. Let people tell you what they want to know. Sometimes you have to tell people what they need to know, but you could be, and, and this is also about the personality. So for instance, if, if, if I'm, a, I'm a high D and a high I, it makes me crazy when people go on and on and on and I've already gotten the gist of it and they repeat it 15 different ways. Oh, crazy making. Um, so that's kind of where I'm going with with this any questions about that did it make sense so it's kind of like i mean it's psychology is what it is it's you you, you read someone um i mean i was taught you know like in sales match their body posture match their language you know try and match them if they're leaning back on a chair don't be up on a table like this hovering them because it's threatening so you got to read their body language and also in an open house is kind of similar to you can talk yourself out of a sale when they're comfortable. Don't keep talking, let them, you know, so, I mean, yeah, reading people, I think is key. 
I think, Donna, you just brought up something really important, and that's that we don't have to talk all the time. We can be quiet sometimes. Sometimes that silence, just letting people absorb in the open, especially in an open house, let them absorb where they are without just chatting at them, right? That's that's a big deal. Um, so I'm glad you brought that up. That silence part is important. And yeah, it's called, um, I, I used to say, the best you could be in sales is to be a chameleon. And it's interesting because when we were in St. Thomas, they have these big lizards and they're real, they're friendly, right? They don't bite or anything like that, but they change colors depending on, so if they're on the sand, they turn gray. If they're on a tree, they turn green. Um, and it's, it's really interesting to watch the same lizard just change its colors, but that's kind of how we can be in real estate to make people, because you feel comfortable when you're around somebody that's like you. Like if I'm, if I'm talking like this and I'm real excited and real intense and you're a real laid back, But if I'm real laid back and you're a real intense person, it's going to seem like boring. So just being able to, and you don't have to shift 100%. You can just ramp it up a little bit, right? To change that speech pattern. Okay. So that's the pivot when we're talking too much about things and people are, we're losing people. So this is a real, this was an aha for me. We all have the same speech patterns. We all have no, we, individual to us. I have my speech patterns. I have the same words I use all the time. Amazing, awesome, fantastic, wonderful. Um, but if you want to sound really intelligent, learn 59 new words, new words other than you use. So make a note of what you're doing this week, the words that you use to describe things. If somebody says, you know, if somebody like Donnie, when I said, that's fantastic, I say that all the time. What if I said, Donnie, that's really clever of you. That's a different way of saying it. That's not in my vocabulary, but I can use that word, right? So just go to a thesaurus, write down the words you use all the time to describe things, and then go to a thesaurus and change those words up. Get 59 new words in your vocabulary, and you'll start to sound really intelligent because almost everybody uses the same words. So use some different words. Um, does that make sense? Okay, and that's an easy thing to do. Easy, easy. You so so Melissa, you've heard this, but when I was growing up, as soon as I learned to read, my dad had us go to the dictionary, and we had to learn three words a week. We had to look them up in the dictionary. Any three words we wanted, we had to define them. We had to spell them and use them in a sentence. And so so if you just did that, if or if you just went to the 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 SAR, I said I'm going to share my screen. I just want to give an example. Give me a sec. This is kind of fun for me because I like I like words. I think words are words are pretty interesting. So thesaurus.com. I'm gonna put in awesome. Oh boy, what if I said that's magnificent? That would get your attention. Formidable, look at that, daunting, uh, wondrous instead of wonderful. I could say that's wondrous. I could say miraculous, I could say spectacular, staggering, stunning, imposing, breathtaking, astounding, astonishing, all those words. I mean, they just sound so different, right? Than the words we use all the time. So that's just an example of something that you can do right quick. Okay, so let me stop the share. Okay, and then, um, so we're taught to ask, and this is, this is a really important one. We're taught, especially in sales, to ask people what they do for a living so that they'll ask us what we do. But in this world that we live in, there have been a lot of changes. It's, it's a lot better. Well, let me not say better. It's a, it's a lot kinder to say, how do you spend the bulk of your hours? Because somebody might have lost their job or been laid off or, or something changed during the pandemic. And if you say, what do you do for a living? And then they get to tell you, oh, well, I was laid off. Well, you've just become Debbie Downer, right? Wah, wah, wah. So how do you spend the bulk of your time? And that way somebody gets to choose. Do I want to talk about my work? Do I want to talk about my passion? Do I want to talk about, you know, what do I want to talk about? It gives them a choice and choices are always, choices are always um, 
received in a different way than dictating or manipulating the way a conversation goes, if that makes sense. So learn to say that one word when you're at a networking event or if you're talking to somebody in an open house, what do you do with the bulk of your time? How do you spend the bulk of your time? Um, it also allows people who choose to stay home with their and raise their kids to have some credibility, right? Instead of, oh, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. Well, just a stay-at-home mom, just a stay-at-home dad. I'm sorry, but that's one of the biggest, most important jobs you can ever have. And I never want to discount that by saying that you don't have a job. So that's, that's a, that's an, I hope you write that down. Um, okay. And this is a, this is something I've learned over the years. One of the things we do, um, and I do this on Zoom all the time, is when somebody says something, I'm like, that's, that's, thank you for that. I love that. Da, da, da. I always, I always have a kind of a judgment about it. I make mine positive judgments because I love when you guys engage and interact, but when you're out listening, suspend judgment. You don't have to comment on everything they say. You can repeat what they just said, right? In a different way, repeat it back to them. That lets them know you heard it. So if I say, um, if I say, Taria, um, how do you spend the bulk of your time? You can take yourself off mute. All day. <laughs> Maria, how do you spend a, the bulk of your time? What do you do? With can the you hear me? Do I have it? I can hear you. Well, I am a PCT and an administrative assistant at a dialysis center. What's a PCT? A patient care technician. Wow, so you're a patient so, uh, at a dialysis center? Yes. Oh, so what's that like? Uh, it's hard. It's hard. I've done it for eight years. And so now I have a new position. I'm a, um, the administrative assistant. So I have my office. And because of the holiday, I've had to work two days in the row on the treatment floor. And... I have realized that I am over it. I do not want to do that anymore. And that's because? I don't, like, it's a lot that just kind of goes into it. Like, I um, actually, my mom was on dialysis, and I she passed in April. And ever since then, realistically, it's just been more of a task than usual. Um, and I just, um, if I can't be in the office, I do not want to work for DeVita no more. I, I'm not so. going to go into this in depth because I can tell there's some emotion around that. And I don't want to take it in that direction. But, but I mean, this is what I say every single day. People are so interesting. And I never yeah. would have known that about you if I hadn't asked, right? Every single, right. One of us, every single one of us has a story. Every single one of us has something that's on our heart. Every single one of us. And that's that's everybody you meet. They, their world is around them. And if you can just mm -hmm. dive into their world a little bit by asking. And what I've, lear what I've learned through all the classes, everything I take, is the more questions you ask, the better off you are. Because that's when you can really connect with people. So, so asking questions and repeating back to people what they said is kind of the, that's the secret sauce. Make it about them. So thank you, Tri. I appreciate you, you sharing in. And uh, no I look forward to getting to know you a whole bunch better. Um, so now how do you want to, so what do you say to somebody, and I'm going to, we're almost finished. What do you say to somebody when you don't know what to say to them? Maybe you're not connecting with them. Maybe they're not very forthcoming, whatever it is. Well, the, the key there is to duplicate. So um, if you say, so for instance, if I'm going to use this example, I use it all the time because I'm not a car girl. Everybody used to say, what kind of car do you drive? And I'd like a blue one. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I think about cars, a blue one with tires, right? Uh, and it's got beige interior. But tell me the tell me the brand. Yeah, I don't know that until I go for my my emission sticker, that kind of stuff. So so say I'm say I'm talking to somebody like our neighbor up the street. They just they, they have a junk removal service, and the it's a dad and mom and two kids. The the sons are you know they're in high school and college, and they're strong. All of them are real strong, 
and so they have a junk removal service and the, the two sons negotiated, they found a, a woman who needed her garage cleaned out and there was a Corvette in there, a really cool Corvette that needed to be refurbished. So they wanna talk about that all the time when I see them, right? I know nothing about cars. So all I do is repeat back to them, whatever they say. So if, if they say, you know, for instance, if I say, hey, how's the car go going? And they're like, oh, the carburetor, the blah, 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 da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, the carburetor, the blah, 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 the da, da, da. And they're like, yeah. And then they expound on that. And then I just repeat that back. I'm like, oh, so in the, the you know, the, the timing belt and, you know, the, the, the thing that you're working on that too. And they're like, yeah, we're working on the timing, but we've got it down to blah, 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 blah. And I just repeat that back to them. They think I am so, such a car person. And I totally don't know what the heck they're talking about, but I can engage them and I can let them talk about what's, what they're passionate about. And that's really what my job is, is to let them, let them shine. That's, that's kind of like, if you've ever taken a dance class, uh, sorry, Donnie, you're then Larry, you're the guys on here. Um, Men, men typically as dancers are supposed to let the women shine and that's what they do. The woman does all the lifts, all the, you know, they do all the things with their legs and they get lifted up. The men are there as kind of the muscle, right? So, so in our, in our world, we can lift up other people up and let them shine and we can step back with our egos and our high personal, high eye personalities. Those of us who have it, we can step back and just let other people shine. Um, I want to say one more con one more thing, and then I want to leave it, leave this, uh, leave it open to questions. And that's that when you use this to get what you want, it's manipulative, manipulative. When you use it to help other people, it's not. So make sure your intentions before you use some of these skills are, are honorable, right? Um, I never want to manipulate anybody. I never want to force anybody to do anything they don't want to do, but I can lift somebody up out of kindness whether they do a real estate transaction with me or not, doesn't matter. I find people fascinating and interesting and I love using these skills to draw people out so I can learn more about them. Does that make sense to everybody? Anybody have any questions, any comments, any things that, and I wanna say one more thing, um, Dustin was talking about in the, um, and then I'll open it up. Dustin was talking about today, NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP is a way of talking to people. Bill's touched on this sometimes, but it's a way of talking to people um, where you plant suggestions in their mind. So for instance, he was talking about if someone, if someone that you send a golden letter to says, well, do you really have a buyer? I get all kinds of people calling me and saying they have buyers. Do you really have a buyer? When he says, well, when we have a buyer, and that's the NLP, when we have a buyer, when we list your home and we bring a buyer, um, it's, he doesn't have to address that particular objection right then, but when we list your home and we have a buyer, that's the NLP, it's, it's a planted suggestion. Okay, now I'm opening it up for questions, comments, experiences, anything. And you know I like interaction, so please speak up. So I started leaving my business cards everywhere I go. Like I went to the barbershop the other day and I said, hey, can I leave these here? I left like a stack of 20. <laughs> Fantastic, Donnie. I love that. That's getting out there. I've gotten in the habit of kind of throwing into a conversation like, oh, well, I'm a realtor now. So blah, blah, blah. And you like, I would say 90% of the time, the person I'm talking to is like, oh, really? Like, and they have some kind of question and it usually will engage in some kind of conversation. You know, what's I'm going to use my new 59 words. You know what's clever about that, Melissa? It's that if you think about it, if you ever have a friend who's a lawyer or a friend who's a doctor, don't you always have a burning desire to ask them a question about something? Oh, yeah. Same, same thing when you describe to somebody that you're a realtor, it's like, oh, I could just get some free advice. Yeah, it, it, that's kind of what it is. They'll usually ask me, I mean, literally, I've gotten every question under the sun. But um, it definitely leaves it to them to kind of open it up. Yeah. Thank you for that. One of the things I do, Candice, is anyone I meet, I, I just let them know that I'm a realtor. And if I could have their number so I could share my business card, my virtual business card versus just my regular. So that way I do get their number and I add to my database. 
So do you use a like a savvy card? Is that what it is? S-A-V-V-Y? No, it was just um it was just created on Canvas that oh, one okay. of my friends did for me. Okay. So there's a there's a, a site. So there's a site. We're gonna have to have you teach that. Um there's a site called S S A A V Y or S A B B Y. Let me check that out. Um S A. Yeah, it's S A V V Y card. And what happens is um, it's 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 an app and you can actually share that and it puts your it puts your app on their phone. Um, you just share it with them and it puts your app on their phone. It's pretty crazy, but they can text you, email you, or call you from that app. Um, and it just shows up as an icon on their phone with your face on it. So pretty cool. Or you could do the Canva thing. So that's a great way to get people's contact information. And just so simple, right, Nadine? Let me sh share your yes, information so I can yes, send you. And I also, when I send my card, I send my app as well. Oh, that's great. That's great. So are you finding people using your app? Not much, but at least I'm getting it out there versus not. Okay. And that's just the two things I send. It's not. I, I think over time people will start getting more comfortable, but that's just something I do. And I I've shared it with two persons, and they've shared it with their friends. And I do see the friends on using my app. Yeah, and you know it just is building over time, so that's great. All right. Anybody else want to say anything? Anybody have anything to share? You all are awesome. Oh, I got to change that. You all are um, wondrous. And I'm so delighted to be in business with you. And I just always appreciate that you're here. Please post in the dual career chat what topics you'd like to have, uh, because I want this to be for you, what you need. So um, if you leave it up to me, I'll probably talk about cooking. So um, post what you want to hear about in the app, OK? And I'll make sure we get those topics on. I'm going to be teaching on Wednesday morning um, a how to how to set up a successful first how to set up a successful uh, webinar, and I'll probably be using first time home buyer as the um, the the subject. So if you want to if you want me to repeat that on one of these nights, I can do that. But if just let me know whatever is burning on your on your minds, and I'll I'll make sure we get that topic in. Okay. And in the what meantime. What was that? I'm sorry. Could you repeat? What is it you're doing? I'm going to be, and you can also rewatch the video. Um, I'm going to be teaching how to hold a successful webinar, and I'm going to be using probably first-time home buyer as the as the subject. So, um, if anybody is interested in doing webinars, you know, like Zoom webinars and trying to get your contacts in in a big way. Uh, we can do that. Just let me know whatever's on your heart, okay? And in the meantime, if I don't talk to you, I hope everybody has so much to be thankful for this holiday season. And um, and I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. Um, Candice, I'm yes. going to send you something via email. And when you get a chance, you just look at it and give me a feedback. I, I sure will, Nadine. Help. Thank you. Absolutely. And by the way, you all know, you can be squeaky wheels. I tell this to everybody, be squeaky wheels. If you're struggling with anything, I don't care if it's mindset, if you're just feeling like, oh, I'm not motivated, whatever it is, just give me a call. We'll work it through. Okay. You're not alone. Same for you, Candace. We're here for you too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank Bye you, guys. everybody. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Thank Bye. you, Candace. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.